A mother comes home to find blood smeared in her home and her 13-year-old missing. But this isn't just the beginning of this crazy disappearance. What happened to Lee Ochai? Hey guys, welcome to Code 187. I'm Sarah and I'm here with my co-host Joe and we are your true crime best friends. Every week I research a true crime case and then we talk about it and try to solve it. So are you ready to solve a crime? I am ready to solve a crime. Sorry, I had to deal with audio there. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Uh, yeah, we're actually on track kind of today. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So today's story is interesting. Um, it's about a 13-year-old girl's disappearance, and there's a lot of theories. So, yeah, this one might be kind of a long one. Here we go with the <laughs> theory one. Now we're going to be pulling so many theories out my butt trying to figure out Okay, here we go. I'm ready. I always do this, but um, okay, so let's start on the morning of August 27th, 1992. Vicki Felton was getting ready for work. She knew already that it was going to be a crazy, crazy day. The town of Tupelo, Mississippi was about to get hit by Hurricane Andrew. This was a Category 5 Atlantic hurricane that struck the Bahamas, Florida, and Louisiana. After it was all over, it left 65 people dead and $27.3 billion in damage. This was a big hurricane, and since it hadn't hit yet, Vicki was planning on just going to work and then checking in with her 13-year-old daughter, Leah, as the storm approached. Lee was pretty scared of storms, um, but she was out of school for the summer, so she was just hanging out at home like a typical teenager, mm -hmm. um, and everything seemed pretty normal, pretty safe, um, and she was going to a school event with her grandma in the afternoon. So Lee was still in her nightgown, but promised her mom that she would be ready when her grandma got there later. Vicki left home at 7.50 a.m., and she trusted Lee to get dressed and be okay, but she still locked the door on the way out. You know, when you're a kid, I think our parents kind of lock us in just to make sure no one comes to the door. The same thing. <laughs> right. Okay, so... At this time, Lee loved or like lived with her mom, and it was just the two of them, and she kind of preferred it and liked it that way. Um, Leah's parents divorced, and her dad, Donald, was still in the military in Germany. Lee's parents used to be both active in the army, but Vicky later settled down in Mississippi to kind of do the mom thing. So Vicky didn't make it very long. <laughs> into work before she was already calling to check on her daughter yep. which same like mm -hmm. there's weather and I have to go to work I'm still going to be calling her up listen they should have something where it's like hey my kids at home we've got bad weather coming in I'm not coming in today Fire. right especially like this big of a hurricane oh yeah but. yeah I mean, come on now people right <laughs> So she was listening to the weather, and she was worried that Lee was going to be scared. Because she spent most days in at home in the summer, her mom had this code when mm. she would call. So she would call, let it ring twice, and then hang up and um, call back. Gotcha. And this was like her mom's way of saying, all right, your mom's calling. You better pick up. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I think it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and you know this was lee's like way of knowing and getting to that phone to answer it because she would knew she was going to be in trouble yeah because that was the one that thing if the phone just rang i'd be like i'm not answering it i'm not answering it and this was right. before 
this is before we had caller ID and stuff, you know, for our younger listeners, you know, we set the phone in the house. Listen, there's a couple couple episodes ago I explained this. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're always talking about how old we are, but <laughs> dating ourselves. Right. Um, so Vicky tried calling a few times and doing this, but we did not answer the phone. Okay. So Vicky decided to drive the mile and a half home, which mm-hmm. isn't very far, to check on her daughter. Now, this is when it gets a little weird. So when Vicky turned to pull into the driveway, she realized that the garage door to the home was wide open. Okay. Now, remember this. The light from the garage door is on okay. at this time. And... I did my research Mm -hmm. and the light in your garage from the door going up stays on for four and a half minutes. Okay. So that garage door had just been pushed up or pulled up or whatever. Yep. Four and a half minutes ago. Yes. And um, I don't think it comes on if it's pulled up manually. Right. That's another thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to have hit the button from the inside. Yes. Is what they're assuming. Okay. So Vicky figured it was her worrying and maybe Lee had done it on an accident or something, Mm -hmm. but she quickly went inside. Okay. This is where she found pretty much a horrific scene. Okay. Um, The walls in the hallway were smeared with blood. Okay. There was small pools of blooding on the carpet. Mm -hmm. Um, So panicking, she's calling out, but there's no answer. She came to Lee's room and found small pools of blood on the floor Mm -hmm. outside Lee's room and even more on the door frame. So Lee was nowhere to be found. Uh, She found more blood near the back door. The most disturbing of all, Lee's nightgown she was wearing that morning Mm -hmm. was in the hamper with blood on it. Okay. So Vicky's like, all right, call in 911. Yes. She called 911 about 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay. Uh, Police actually showed up pretty much in full force for this one. Okay. Which is like, we don't hear that a lot, but you know. More than likely, they're always just like, we'll get to it. Right. (laughs) The storm's getting ready to hit, so. Yeah. Yeah. So they were worried, and um, also, this was like a pretty little community Mm -hmm. where everyone knew everyone, and they all knew Lee. Mm -hmm. Um, So they just started looking super fast. Yes. Um, Police described more blood found in the bathroom. Um, they say it was very obvious that someone tried to clean up the blood. Okay. Uh, the blood on the door frame seemed to have some hair attached to it. Uh, so they think that that's where she might have hit her head. Okay. Um, there was no sign of forced entry into the home, and the door that Vicky had locked was now unlocked. Okay. Um, so... Lee had recently for her birthday gotten like a matching bra and underwear set. Okay. And when I say like bra, it was like a training kids, 13 year old, like, yeah. I got a bra <laughs> set. Um, but she was like super stoked. And so I think she wore that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm a which, woman now. <laughs> right, right. As a 13 year old girl, like, I needed a row bra at 13, but like <laughs> a lot of my friends were like, we got bras and they were like, nothing. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And I didn't have that problem. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't relate. Um, all right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so she got this like matching bra and underwear set and both the bra and the nightgown was in the hamster or the hamster (laughs) it was in the hamster (laughs) hamper listen 
shame on you for what you mean. I'm so involved in this story. I imagine the clothes inside of a hemp hamster. <laughs> like, thanks. So now I have this hamster wearing a bra and a nightgown, like just hanging out. Good lord. I apologize. Hamster. Um, okay, so it was in the hamster. I can't. See. It was in the dirty clothes. <laughs> Hamper. <laughs> Hamper. Yes. <laughs> What's really funny is I wrote hamster in my notes. You were typing too fast. I Look, was typing too fast. This is your fault because you said we are on track earlier. I did. <laughs> we were doing good. <laughs> we were, but nothing goes according to plan. <laughs> all right so i read that the blood on these seemed to be kind of dripped from above okay so it seemed she was bleeding from her head and then a blood fell downward okay. under her the underwear from the set was missing okay along with her glasses shoes and a sleeping bag okay um the blood was attempted to be cleaned up, but the rag that was used was never found. Okay. Um, and so that was kind of weird. Um, police did a big search. The community did searches. Police searched the area with cadaver and blood dogs. Mm -hmm. But due to weather conditions, because now it was raining, mm -hmm. the dogs weren't able to get the scent. They did find out that the blood type found in the house was O, was okay. type O blood, and that matched Leah's. Okay. Um, so the police believed this was all her blood, but they had no real way of testing it back then. Okay. Um, when it comes to the blood, we are talking enough to be concerning for sure. Okay. But police are not enough, like, not sure enough to say that it was for sure a homicide, but not enough to rule it out either. I was getting ready to ask you in the beginning. Um, we said this was a missing case. And mm -hmm. I was, from just you describing the blood, I was going to interrupt and be like, sir, it's a murder. <laughs> it's not a missing case. Right. Um, but then you kept saying it was just like little droplets. And then... Uh, it on her dress and stuff like that so i can understand why they're why they're they're not saying it's actual homicide right so we know there was an injury of some sort yes probably to the head right we don't know if lee did this to herself mm -hmm. we don't know if someone else did it we don't we don't really have a lot in that area yet yeah and i mean I don't want to say anything yet. I'm going to get more information. I'm going to get more information before I start talking. <laughs> right. Um, so do you want to stop here and go on a break, and then we can come back and talk about some more stuff? Yes. Let's okay. do that. We're going to go to a break. See, Sarah, she's on top of it. So we're going to go to a break right quick, guys, and then we shall be right back after this. See you on the flip side. Hi, my name is Marcus, and I am the host of Comic Corner. Along with my co-host Mason, we bring the kingdom of geekdom to light, or to darkness. Join us as we talk about heroes, villains, myths, and more things nerdy. Listen to us every Wednesday at 8 on Spotify. Brought to you by Gateway Pro Productions. Guys, and we are back with Code 187. We've got a pretty interesting case we've got going on here. We have a missing persons case, and we were just getting ready to get into the meat and potatoes of it, where we're, you know, where I go on my little tangent about uh, everything going on. But uh, we have to stop and take a break because freaking Zoom. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, hop right back into it. So I had a question, but I forgot it. So Sarah, just continue with the case. <laughs> Okay, well, we've got covered a lot because we talked about hamsters and yeah. we've talked about <laughs> the case too. So just, yeah, if you're just now joining us, you've missed a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's continue with Lee here. And so she, we talked about her having possible head injury. Yes. 
Um, and the cops not knowing kind of if it's a homicide yet or what is really happening here. So like I mentioned in the first part, there was this massive hurricane coming. Yes. And so Leah's case just kind of dissipated. Oh, yeah. Um, the hurricane was a massive news piece. Yep. And this little missing girl wasn't on the top of the list anymore. Yep. Um, and police kind of did all they could. There wasn't much else to do at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Vicky hired a private investigator. So Vicky is Lee's mom. Okay. Um, but even then, after the PI was hired, not much was even found. Yes. Um, Donald, who is Lee's dad, was able to obtain an emergency one month leave on September 6th, 1992, after which he moved to Tupelo to help search for his daughter. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is like the first little piece of like hope after the incident that happened. Mm-hmm. So about a month after, uh, Vicky received in the mail a eight inch envelope addressed to B. Yarborough. Okay. Living on Honey Locust. Honey was spelt wrong. Okay. Um, but it also had six stamps on it, which were twice the amount that this letter or this thing needed. Yeah. Um, it was postmarked to Boonville, Mississippi. Okay. In the envelope was Lee's glasses, but nothing else. Gotcha. So just her glasses. Um, the FBI and the Mississippi Crime Lab performed like handwriting Nothing really came back. Um, And they kind of decided to test all these stamps. Okay. Because they were like, all right, if we could get DNA off of all these stamps, this might work. Well, whoever did this was smart enough to seal the stamps with water Mm. and not saliva. Now, people, if you don't know what's, for the younger audience, if you don't know what stamps are, stamps is what you have to (laughs) Onto a letter, a letter actually. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. No email back in this. <laughs> yeah. Back in these times. That really was before email. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Stone ages. Jesus. Yeah, this was snail mail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the person who mailed the glasses has never been identified. Uh huh. Um, but police believe they were sent in order to throw off the investigation. Yes. So I think people at first were like, okay, did somebody find these glasses, not want to get involved, but want to return them? Mm -hmm. So they just sent them. Um, But police were like, no, we think it really was whoever did this. Oh, yeah. it's Sending the glasses. It's a ballsy move. I mean. Very ballsy. Can you imagine like, okay, you just murdered slash kidnapped somebody. And you find you got their glasses, you send it to them with water on the stamps at this make them stick. And then they don't have any other evidence. Oh my gosh. Like um, BTK should take lessons from this person. (laughs) Yeah, this person, whoever this was, they knew what they were doing and they got away with it for sure. And it's kind of like that one case we talked about where the young lady was... um, kidnapped or killed uh the same day as michael jackson's death there was just something as an event happened that was in favor of the criminal you know right um i just think that's just crazy he this storm's happening he or she probably didn't know it was going to be a huge storm and it just helped them in their favor and they get to be still walking around right for sure and so there was a lot of weird things about the case. Mm-hmm. Um, so 14 months after Lee's disappearance, a skull was found in a soybean field. Okay. And it was identified as Lee's. Okay. So the family was like, all right, that is that. We got it. But it wasn't hers. Okay. There was a, the medical examiner basically didn't match the right dental records okay to the right person and 
it was determined to be a missing 27 year old woman. Okay. So like this family is getting like this little ray of hope and then let down and then little ray of hope and then let down. And it's so infuriating. Oh yeah. That sounds really, really bad. I don't know. And this is a very popular true crime story because there is so many wrenches thrown into things, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's just mystery after mystery kind of. Yeah. I mean, cause you even got to think, I mean, let's think about the garage, the garage being open. Now, uh, as we know, there's, you usually have like two garage openers. That's going to be the one that's going to be by your little door. And then there's going to be the one that's in your car. The only part time you would have access to that is if they took it out of your car. Now I know my parents had ours on like the, um, the, I can't think of the name, the mirror that, you know, the visor. Yeah. The visor. We had it on the visor so that you could just hit it. So, um, what was the mom's name? One more time. Vicky. Vicky. I I knew served to be Vicky could have not known that it was up there. You know, she could have just not even thought about it. Um, but she didn't, I mean, she didn't even think about that afterwards, but yeah, the garage is open. So that's a mystery. And I've got all this blood and the girl's missing. And with the garage, so I was automatically thinking of my garage door, which I know they're probably not the same, but I'm sure it's a little bit. So like we have where like you can just push it open yeah, and uh, like on the house. Yep. Um, and then there's a code thing that you can put a code in or whatever. Yep. Um, I think what everybody's opinion was, was that Vicky literally missed this person by minutes. Yes. And they opened up that door. They either walked or drove away Mm -hmm. just in that couple of minutes, which is so terrifying. Wait, isn't this 92? So was that code even, that code box even invented yet? I don't know when they're, I should have looked into that. Because I'm thinking. If it was a code thing, then it's someone that you know. Yes. Ooh. It is someone, you know, or he was just, he or she, because we don't know who it was, um, was just watching you like a hawk. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to go back. There was no forced entry. Mm-hmm. So Lee let this person in, is what the cops believe. So Vicky has always said it's someone that was close to her. Yeah. So this could have been someone who knew if there was a code or if like there was a extra garage door opener somewhere or something like that. So now my thing is, it's like, what's the, what's the motive or is it just a crazy person, you know? Um, yeah. So we've got a lot of theories here. Um, I wanted to point out to, to this day, Lee has never been found. There's never been remains, no more evidence. Um, However, this case is one of those cases where there's like multiple valid suspects. Okay. And so you like the first one, you're like, yeah, like case solved, like done. And then you look at someone else and you're like, okay, case done. Like what? what? <laughs> it's very weird like that. Like that case with the, uh, the lady who went missing on the beach. Yes, Tim, exactly. Tim looking at the binoculars and everything. <laughs> 30 Tim. Um, (laughs) All right. So first let's talk about this obvious person. Okay. So Vicky, who is Lee's mom, believes that a man named Oscar Mike Kearns is the one that did this. So (laughs) Mike knew uh, Lee from church. He was a local man. He taught Sunday school and Bible school. And she was very familiar with Mike. Um, Lee also loved horses. And Mike would see her at the stables. So like, weirdo Mike is (laughs) hanging around a lot. And we don't know, maybe Mm -hmm. this is him. Mm -hmm. So this is where it gets like, you're like, okay, yeah. Um, there was no sign of forced entry. So the mom's like, okay, was this Mike that came over and was like, 
you know me. I'm Mike from church. I'm cool. Um, if that's true, she missed him by four minutes. Um, and Mike only lived a mile from Lee's home. Hmm. So <laughs> Mike was found to be a horrible guy anyway, <laughs> of course. Um, only nine months after Lee's disappearance, Mike abducted a 15-year-old girl from her home in Memphis, Tennessee, sexually assaulted her, and then released her. He also had known this victim from church. How long was it after Lee was gone? Nine months. Nine. Not even a year. Can you imagine Lee goes missing, the mom comes after you, and you're like, no, I would never do anything like that. I'm the church going guy. And then nine months later, and then the mom's just like, <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, and this this story of this other girl is exactly like Lee's. Like, mm-hmm. came into her home, abducted her. Like, did Lee fight back? And that's why there was blood. And this girl just was sexually assaulted and let go. Like, I'm like, man, Mike, 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 you did it. <laughs> it's one of those things, like... <laughs> Hold on a second. Our intro is playing. There we go. They're gone. Okay. But it's one of those things where it's just like, maybe it gave him, maybe Mike is innocent. And then that sparked something in his, in him, you know, uh, he's like, wow, somebody just snuck into the house and just did this whole thing. I can, I want to see if I want to do that because he's got yeah. some. Ugh, and it could have been coincidence, but like, that's was too it? Much. Was it Mike? Yeah, that's too much of a coincidence, right there. Yeah, I'm the same age. Literally, the same thing happened. So he pled guilty to rape and was sentenced in, for eight years in prison, uh, but then was released after four years. After his release, he kidnapped a married couple. Where he raped the wife and then he was sent back to prison. He is, he was scheduled to be released in 2019. When I researched this guy, I couldn't find him, which Mm -hmm. is probably a good thing. But like, it that would have been Mike's, if he did this to Lee, it's his third offense, which three strikes you're out, you would have had a bigger sentence. Yes. Please keep Mike in jail. <laughs> for the safety of everyone, Mike needs to be behind bars for yeah, sure. This one, oh, he spent, he's done his time. No, he hasn't. I mean, no, not enough. No, no. He refused to be interviewed by police or be polygraphed, which probably good. Uh, <laughs> this part just made me so mad because he's a predator and mm-hmm. like lock him away, please. Um, I couldn't find much about where he is now or even if he's like still in prison, but um, so far he's not been charged in connection with Lee's death. Um, So rumors swirled about another suspect and it's pretty unlikely, but then you start looking. Uh, it kind of makes sense. That's how it will happen with Mike. And it's like, oh no, he didn't do it. And then you told me more stuff about Mike. And I was like, okay, so suspect two. Yep. The other suspect in this case was right in front of us the whole time. Lee's mother, Vicky. You're looking at me like, like I was looking at this research. <laughs> Does that work? What is she? Okay, so <laughs> rumors around town swirled that it was Vicky and possibly a boyfriend of hers. Okay. So according to Donald, which is Lee's father, uh, Vicky, when he told him, when she told him about the disappearance, said she had ran away and there was no reason for him to come home. Um, but then when he arrived, he was like, oh, this is a way bigger deal than what you told me it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and residents told Donald, you need to look at the mom because the mom is acting not right, which 
we've kind of talked about like, uh, at least I've talked about in the past that you, you don't always have a look or you don't always have a way of dealing with things. Yeah. I mean, you just got to think about it. Her daughter is gone. Only daughter right. is gone. How are you supposed to act? <laughs> right. There's not a handbook. There's not a, a thing that's like, you're supposed to do this and this and this. Yeah. So looking into Vicky though, um, she just broke up with a man named Barney Yarborough. Well, he's dead. Which, mm-hmm. if we remember, <laughs> name's Barney, yeah. Uh, if we remember back to the envelope, it was addressed to B. Yarborough. So either the person knew that Barney had lived there, uh-huh. or this was all made up, basically. Okay. Um, Barney had lived with Vicky and Lee. Um, And Lee had told her friends that she was having some issues at home. She told them that she was scared of Barney and her mother. While at summer camp, Lee had what I can only explain as like panic attacks around going home. She begged the camp, don't send me back. Um, She had a lot of bruises and marks a lot of the time. Uh Um. These were sometimes across her face, um, her arms, and other places. Um, and she told a lot of her friends that she had got them from riding horses. Yes. Which could be. Yeah. Um, you fall off a horse, you get hit by a branch or whatever. You can fall off a horse or getting hit by a branch. Exactly. And it's a likely excuse. It's a, it's a good excuse, you know, for a kid to stay. And I was going to say, too, so did they break up before or after the disappearance? Before, but not very long before. Okay. A couple months, I think. Okay. I mean, if there was the code on there, Barney should know the code. Mm-hmm. Um. Most people like the garage door, like not the big garage door, but the door that connects the garage to the house, that's usually unlocked. So he could have just walked in and Lee could have told him, yeah, come on in. Like maybe he said, I need to get something. Well, I don't think she would have let him in because maybe of, not because of the relationship. And that's why there's so much blood in different areas of the house. And sure. plus he could have been a predator at the same time too, you know? Um, yeah or it could have been like an accidental thing like he told her to do something he hits her on the head and then she's running away from him all bloodied up and then he's like well I can't have this happen because now if she goes to the police or something I go to jail so she's just gonna disappear right and then he can have her glasses and then kind of mail the stuff to him or to the house with his name on it. Mm -hmm. So Barney and Lee's father, David, took polygraphs and passed. That Mm. doesn't mean anything. We've talked about that. Um, However, Vicky took two polygraphs and failed both. God damn it. (laughs) If Vicky did this, her timeline that she gave can't be trusted at all. Mm -hmm. Anything she said can't be trusted. So Lee could have been killed at any time, dumped at any time. Um, all the whole thing of her going to work, coming back could be a ruse. Yeah. What, um, what about the um, phone records and her call? So I think everything checked out with the calling. Um, I think that did happen, but she said Lee didn't answer. So she could have just been calling the house and no one answered. Yeah. Um, which I guess, yeah. So I have a couple more things and then we can talk about kind of our theories. Do you want to take a break? Yes. <laughs> okay. I think we have to. Yeah, we have Darn to. Darn it. We still have one more person after this? No, no. Um, it's basically a lot more to have to do with Vicky. Um, and then just some kind of weird things that happen. Okay, well, we're going to go to a break.
in a world with pain and destruction. We need a hero. Who will be that hero? Gateway Pro presents an old podcast. The Joe Show. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wrong ad, wrong ad. Let's try that again. Hey guys, my name is Joe and I'm the host of the Joe Show podcast. On my show, we talk about anything and everything except politics. You will never know what we'll be talking about on our show, so you should definitely tune in. Join my boy Marcus and my brother Mason as we talk about food, superheroes, and those are just some of our temple topics. Sometimes we can get a little complex and talk about the difference between wisdom and knowledge. You never know what we're going to be talking about on the Joe Show. Even though we have a plethora of topics to talk about, our goal is to entertain you, the listener. So check us out on social media at Gateway Pro on Facebook, The Joe Show on Reddit, The Joe Show 2020 on TikTok, and The Joe Show underscore 20 on Instagram. You can also find us Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Join us every Monday at 8 o'clock. Hi guys, I just wanted to say I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like any of the content for Code 187, please click that subscribe button, that like button, that share button. Help us out, help us grow. Um, you can find us on your favorite podcast platforms. Um, yeah, check us out on there. Give us some ratings. Um, tell us what you think. We're also across every social media on Code187. So we're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I think that's it. Um, and of course, YouTube. So please, please, please subscribe um, if you like our content and spread the word. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.